Feline Custô tem uma forte ligação com a Amazônia, região que visitou com o um avô, o oceanógrafo e documentarista Jacques Custô, no início dos anos 1980, quando ainda era criança. Já adulta, ela retornou à região em 2006 para acompanhar o pai, Jean-Michel Custô, numa expedição. Celine Custot foi a convidada da aula inaugural do Departamento de Engenharia Civil e Ambiental. Um dos lugares visitados por ela na Amazônia foi a terra indígena Vale do Javari, no extremo sudoeste do estado do Amazonas, que faz fronteira com o Peru. É lá que fica o maior número de grupos isolados. Em 2010, a convite do amigo, o ativista indígena Beto Marubo, produziu um filme denúncia sobre a alarmante situação de saúde dos povos da região assolados pela malária e pela hepatite. Depois da aula, a TV PUC-Rio conversou com a documentarista. Ativista ambiental e documentarista, Celine Custô já veio algumas vezes aqui no Brasil. A primeira vez que ela veio foi com seu avô Custô quando era criança. Depois ela voltou com seu pai, Jean-Michel Custô. Ela também veio falar a respeito sobre o seu projeto Javari, que implementa ações para o povo indígena no Amazonas. Celine, depois da sua viagem para o Peru, você pretende voltar para o Amazonas? Eu viajei muito no Amazonas em Brasil, em Brasil. agora vou passar em inglês. Um, I've been coming back to, to Brazil to work in the Vale do Javari. I did a film there called Tribes on the Edge at the request of the indigenous people for me to tell their story. But I wanted to do something more. And so I'm working with the indigenous people on a project, it's called the Javari Project, to bring tangible support back to the indigenous people at their request. So they're asking us to build a school because they want to continue education They want to build a living pharmacy to be able to access their medicinal plants um, and they want to be able to protect their land. Uhum. Ok. When does exactly this expedition begin? Sorry, I'm going to Portuguese. There are several things that are in play. So right now the Javari project, we're hoping to be able to go back to the Javari territory to evaluate how we're going to work on the land. Then there's another project um, called From Ice to Sea, which is working with Yuri Sanada to uh, trace the new source of the Amazon with the old source of the Amazon and come together and do the entire uh, length of the Amazon River. Um, that project will be in 2024, and I will be participating in part of it. Okay, thank you. Você acompanha muito, há muito tempo as questões dos povos indígenas no Brasil. Como está a situação do, do Vale do Javari hoje? Well, the, the Javari territory has been under a lot of pressure from illegal activities. So there's illegal gold mining, there's narco trafficking um, using the rivers, um, there's cattle ranching coming from the south. And so all of that pressure, including fishing and hunting, all of the pressure of the illegal activities is actually destroying the land but it's also a threat to indigenous lives because there's been assassinations on their land. There, there is right now a, an amelioration of the situation um, because there's reinforced support um, to be able to protect the land, but it, it is a very difficult situation there. É, como vê a situação atual no país em relação à política é, indigenista? What I'm seeing right now is that the politics around indigenous rights and environmental rights is improving. It's going to take time. And I think it's very important for us to also understand that those who are committing crimes on indigenous land are also trying to feed their families. And so if we are going to stop them from these illegal activities, it's also important for us to offer other opportunities for their survival because otherwise they're just going to continue to destroying in other areas. I think there's going to be, we're going to see an improvement um, in indigenous rights, um, thanks to a uh, new Ministry of Indigenous Peoples with Sonia Guerrera. And hopefully the Brazilians will be on board understanding that human rights are everybody's rights and that the Amazon is an ecosystem on which we all depend. Knowing that indigenous people actually protect land more so than just conservation land, um, is also a benefit to protecting indigenous people to protect the land. Thank you. E quais são as questões centrais hoje na Amazonas, na sua opinião? One of the biggest issues that I'm seeing is, is human rights. I'm going to keep talking about indigenous people. 
there's less deforestation on indigenous land than there is on conservation land. When we start to understand that, we start to know that the presence of people can be a benefit to the environment. And then we start to understand protecting people is protecting the environment, which is good for us. I ask the question if people like to breathe. Você quer respirar? 20% da oxígeno do planeta vem da Amazonas. If people like to breathe, then, then they're going hopefully to understand why it's important for us to protect the Amazon. All while understanding that we need to have a robust and sustainable economic system in this country where people can actually make a living. So it's a complex question, um, but I think there's always solutions. E o que achou da sua experiência aqui na PUC? Como é que está sendo para você vir aqui na, na PUC? É a primeira vez que você vem? É a primeira vez que, que venho aqui no PUC e it's actually been delightful. We parked on the other side of the campus and walking through the forest in the middle of Rio and seeing just the bamboo shoots and then the construction with bamboo. For me, it was a breath of fresh air in the city to be able to come here. Um, the experience of, of speaking in front of the audience here in Puki was actually really delightful. It's a very, um, I'm going to say, welcoming audience. Um, and also to be able to have a conversation and an exchange um, of ideas and thoughts. And I think that that, for me, is why I do what I do, is, is communication and conversation is really important. Muitíssimo obrigado pela sua entrevista. A entrevista foi maravilhosa. E eu agradeço por você ter aceitado conversar comigo. Foi um prazer, obrigada.